Hey everyone, welcome back as we finish up chapter one. The first thing we are gonna do is find the solution set for each of these equations with this set of data. If we look at one, it says z plus 10 equals 22. Well, what data set is z? We wanna look at this data set. So we are only gonna plug these points in for z. We're not gonna do anything with y for right now. So we start off with, with 10, plus 10, does that equal 22? That equals 20. No, the only data set that we can have that would be correct would be if it equals 22. So 10 does not work. Next, we're going to try 12. 12 plus 10 is 22. So yes, that works. 12 is good. Now let's try 14. 14 plus 10. Does that equal 22? No, that equals 24, so that does not work. And then 16 plus 10 is 26, so that doesn't work. So the only point that work works is 12. So our only answer is 12. Next, for number two, now we have to do the same ex exact thing, except now it is y, so we use the y data set and you can do this a couple different ways you can distribute it right away or you can plug in the points well i'm gonna distribute it right away so now we have 4y plus 4 equals 40 and now i'm going to plug the data points into this equation this new equation so i'm going to start with one four times one plus four and 4 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is, or sorry, 4 times 1 is 4, t plus 4 is 8. Is that 40? No, it is not. Then I'm going to plug in 3. 4 times 3 plus 4. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 4 is 16. That is not 40, so 3 doesn't work. I try again. 4 times 5 plus 4. 4 times 5 is 40, plus 4 is 24. Again, that does not work. Let's see if we can try that last 7. 4 times 7 plus 4. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 4 is 32. That is not 40. So we have no set that works, so then we say that it there is no solution. So you can write it out like that, or you can put a 0 with a line through it, meaning no solution. Next, we are asked to solve this equation. Well, it's nothing too bad. It looks more uh, worse. It works looks more bad than it really is. Well, let's take a peek at it. What we have to do is solve the top and solve the bottom and then just figure out what t is. Well, 9 times 6 is 54. And then that is over, remember what we have to do first, parentheses, 8 plus 1 is 9. And then we have still have times 3. And so again we have 54 on top over 9 times 3 is 27. And then if we plug it into our handy dandy calculator, 54 divided by 27 is 2, so now t equals 2, so we solve the equation. Next, we're going to get into a couple of vocab words. First, we're going to start with a relation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. So you could have 1, 2, or you could have negative 4, 5, or you could have 3, 2. You could have any numbers that you want to. Next vocab word is domain. The domain is the first coordinate in the ordered pair. So the domain is your x value. Again, your domain is your x value. So in these ordered pairs up top, 1 would be the domain, negative 4 would be the domain, 3 would be the domain. That 1 would be the domain. Then to go along with the domain is the range, which is the second coordinate in the ordered pair. That is the y coordinate. So here it would be the 2, here it would be the 5, here it would be the 2 again. So the range is the y, the domain is your x, all right? Domain is your x, range is your y, that is very important going forward. 
Mapping. Mapping shows how each member of the domain is paired with the member of the range. So if we look at our relation, here we have 1 goes to 2, so this would be your x values, this would be your y values. This is x, that is y. 1 goes to 2, then we have negative 4 goes to 5, and then 3 to 7. 3 to 7. That is a mapping. That's how it that's how you show what points belong to what. And now over here we have, I'm going to draw them in for you, 8 to negative 4. We have negative 3 to 9, 1 to 2, and 8 to 5. All a mapping does is show what points belong to each other. Uh, different ways to represent relations. We have ordered pairs, which please remember goes x, y, those are the ordered pairs. You could also represent them in a table. So one three would be represent x or sorry one three would be represented in a table as one being under the x, three being under the y. Still your domains, still your ranges. You could represent them as a graph. Remember that this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. Y because it's longer. X because it's flat. Right? X y and again your mappings just like you read from left to right x y now a little bit to go along with the relation is a function a function is a special type of relation and it is a relation in which each element of the domain so an x value so there's one x is paired with exactly one element of the range so there is a y. So we have 1x belongs to 1y. 1x belongs to only 1y. So let's graph this relation. Here we're given uh, some coordinate points or ordered pairs. So let's go ahead and put these on the graph. So we have 8, 1. So I go over 8, up 1, put a point. I go over 4, and then down 2, put a point. I go over 1, up 1. I go over negative 3 because that's my x value. Then I go up 2. Then I go over negative 6. Remember, negatives go to the left. And negatives also go down for my negative 8. And put a point. Now, I ask the question, is this the, a function? Well, a function is, again, a relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element in the range. So we have only one y for each x. So is there a y value? Is there more than one y value for each x? No, there is not. There is only one y for each x. So yes, this is a function. Let's determine whether each of these relations is a function. First, we are given an ordered pair, and then I put the mapping down here for us already. Now, since each one of these x's, this is x, this is y, each one of these x's has only one y. It does not go to more than one y. This is a function. So, yes, this is a function. Now, here, look over here, x, y. We have 8 goes to negative 4. Negative 3 goes to 9, which is already drawn in for us. 1 goes to 2 and now be careful here because 8 goes to 5 so now we have two y's for one x we can only have one y for one x so because 8 goes to negative 4 and 8 goes to 5 this is not a function so this would be no or not a function not a function, and I should put not a function. Now, if we're given some equations, f of x, and now we read this f parenthesis x as f of x equals 2x plus 3, and g of x equals this, find each value. Well, when we look at 4, we have f of 3. Since we are given this f, we are going to use that equation. 
So to be mathematically correct when you write it out, you can put f of and then this 3 instead of x because this 3 is going to replace that x. So again, I'm putting this 3 in for this x because this 3 takes a place of all the x's. So I'm going to go 2 times 3 plus 4. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4. So f of 3 is 10. Next for 5, be very careful. It's the g function. So I have to use, use a different color. I have to use that function. Right? This function belongs with that guy. So to be mathematically correct, I'm going to put g of negative 2. Now if you don't put this g of negative 2, it's not the biggest deal, but a lot of mathematicians will use it. You'll see it in the future. So g of negative 2, I'm going to replace my x's in this equation with negative 2. So negative 2 squared minus 3. Now, negative 2 squared, remember, be very careful here. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 minus 3. So we have g of negative 2 equals 1. Next, we have some more vocab words. We have linear, which is a graph of a straight line. Nonlinear is a graph of or the graph is not a straight line. And now correlation is how close the data points are to each other. When we are asked if this is a positive or negative or no correlation, it's depending if you can see a trend in the data. So if there would be a correlation to this data. And what kind of correlation would it be? It would be a positive correlation. How about this data? Since it is going down from left to right, it is going down from left to right, it would be a negative correlation. And now, can you see any pattern here? Is it going down? Is it going up? Is it going sideways? Well, I can't really tell. And so I'm going to say that there is no correlation. So again, to recap, Positive correlation is where you can tell that the data is going up from left to right. As you read, it's going uphill. Negative correlation goes downhill, and you cannot tell in no correlation. And that does it for Chapter 1, Part 2.